So uh, my talk is about the oxide spinels for the casual materials uh, to achieve the room temperature operation with the magnesium reverse battery. So these uh, teams are supported by the uh, Japanese project uh, Aruka Spring. So, so this is a governing board of the uh, JSP Alpha School Inc. So uh, Professor uh, Kohei Uosaki is a program officer and Kiyoshi Kanamura is a team leader. So this project targets the next generation batteries uh, such as all solid state batteries, lithium sulfur batteries, and lithium air batteries, and magnesium batteries. So uh, I'm in the magnesium recharge batteries, so I'm focusing on the, uh, these topics. So we are focusing on the, uh, using the magnesium metals and oxide uh, cathode materials to achieve high voltage uh, batteries. So recently, uh, there are many uh, advising papers about the anodes and electrolytes, uh, like for the anodes, magnesium metals, and a zinc uh, mixture and uh, alloys. And for the electrolytes, uh, that's how Gaga uh, published a paper. So there is a uh, oxyfluoride fluorinated uh, borate or aluminate uh, electrolytes that shows a very great performance against anode sites. So we have to uh, uh, achieve the great cathode materials, but up to date, there is no good ma candidates for the cathode materials. So in 2000, uh, Ovaha uh, produced the several type uh, sulfide-based materials. Uh, also, it showed great cycle performance, but uh, due to the sulfide, uh, it shows lower uh, operation voltage with low capacity. Uh, compared to that, uh, oxide type materials should show a high, vo high potential, a high voltage. Uh, so uh, to achieve a high, vo uh, high energy uh, batteries, uh, oxide cathode uh, should be uh, uh, used. Uh, however, uh, compared to the sulfide, uh, so oxide should show a lower conductivity inside the cathode materials. So we have to uh, improve the uh, oxide-based materials. So among the oxide series, uh, spinel oxides uh, are regarded as a, a highly conductive, relatively highly conductive uh, mat oxide materials. Here is a, a spinel oxide, uh, like magnesium manganese oxide. So when the, uh, the intercalation with the magnesium iron, uh, it's formed to the lambda type uh, spinel oxides and uh, manganese oxide. So this reaction is a, a three plus and four plus redox reaction with the transition metals. But uh, of course, Brian uh, yesterday uh, told us a great talk about the, uh, the whole reaction at the, this site uh, relatively difficult uh, due to the oxidation limit of the electrolyte. So uh, we just uh, focused on the latter side. The left side shows the reduction I mean the uh, over-magnetization uh, to the spinel oxides. So this reaction is a trivalent to divalent reaction. So magnesium, when incited in the spinel, so, spinel, so uh, tetrahedral site of the magnesium can easily move to the octahedral site to form rock salt phase. So uh, this is a, a conductive conduction path and migration path. So this spinel shows uh, like uh, conductivity of this value. Uh, this value is much lower than the lithium uh, manganese oxide spinel case, but it's feasible to approach for the room temperature operation. However, uh, up to date, we uh, performed various uh, synthesis of the uh, manganese, uh, magnesium manganese oxide spinels uh, with uh, various uh, particle diameters. So surprisingly, uh, these materials show different uh, specific surface area and show uh, different discharge capacity at the first cycle. Uh, these are conducted in the room temperature. So uh, surprisingly, the discharge capacity uh, critically depends on the specific surface area, uh, especially the liner, liner uh, correlations. So from that, uh, we can uh, analyze the <coughs> At that, so the magnesium insertion into the spinel oxide can only uh, into the only one nanometer at the surface area. 
So this, uh, the right uh, image is a schematic image of the materials. So even uh, we fabricated the great spinel oxides, uh, magnesium, uh, iron uh, can, can, can only insert into the uh, least uh, surface at one nanometer size. So in that the spinel size, there is uh, inactive. So to achieve more high, high reversible capacity uh, with the spinel oxides, so enhance to the magnesium ion insertion or downsizing the core materials are necessary. So here, uh, I uh, performed the various uh, techniques to fabricate non-sized spinel uh, oxides uh, because the Zolgel-based uh, process requires a calcination process. A calcination should, uh, a new, uh, sorry, uh, nuclearization and uh, uh, crystal growth during the calcination process, so we uh, conducted a wet process. So uh, these are kind of three uh, procedures. One is a solve summer. This is a, a common uh, procedure and hot injection process and alcohol reduction process. Uh, we succeeded in this uh, magnesium manganese spinel oxides within 10 nanometer spinel uh, uh, in diameter. So uh, uh, here I will introduce the uh, top two of the key points and uh, main data of the latter point. So first, <coughs> by the solve thermal condition, uh, we can uh, succe uh, successfully obtain the magnesium manganese oxide spinel uh, using the ethanol uh, solve thermal conditions. So we also try to hydrothermal conditions uh, as shown here. Uh, but uh, we couldn't obtain the uh, mixed, uh, sorry, uh, bi bi binary oxide spinels, uh, only the uh, manganese uh, oxide spinel. So this is a uh, inverse uh, behavior against the lithium case. So there is a very uh, critical difference between the lithium case and magnesium case. So magnesium ion is a divalent ion, so it is very uh, strongly uh, coordinated with a uh, solvent. Uh, uh, solvent, uh, yes. <laughs> so in the hydrothermal condition, magnesium ion strongly coordinated with uh, uh, water, and uh, it is difficult to be solvation to form spinels. Uh, on the other hand, the, in the ethanol uh, situation, the magnesium ion uh, weakly coordinated the ethanol to uh, desorbation to form the uh, binary oxide spinels. So to fabricate the uh, magnesium manganese oxide spinels uh, in the wet process, uh, tuning the solvation uh, is very important to synthesize. Okay. So next, uh, we direct to uh, downsize the particles by uh, downsizing the reaction temperature. So we uh, just uh, try to synthesize the hot injection process, uh, which is uh, very uh, uh, reported by the solar, uh, solar quantum dots synthesized. So this is a uh, uh, brief images. So uh, reactants are mixed in the with the surfactant and uh, adding the water to nucleation uh, proceed at the uh, mild temperature. So left, uh, left bottom figure is a TEM images. So you can see the uh, dispersed uh, particles. So this is a one of the uh, spinel figure. So <laughs> particle size is uh, approximately seven nanometers, uh, so we can obtain the clear spinel. <laughs> so <laughs> by the, this uh, procedure, we uh, uh, additionally obtain the new data. So this is a, a synchrotronic XRD patterns. Uh, we uh, fitted a little bit of fitting, so uh, we, obtain, we analyzed these uh, materials as the cubic uh, magnesium manganese oxide. So usually, uh, magnesium manganese oxide is a, uh, manganese is a young chair behavior. So usually, uh, magnesium manganese oxide is a tetragonal phase. But uh, we obtained cubic phase. So this is a metastable phase uh, that is obtained in the lower temperature condition or ultra high uh, synthesis, uh, calcination condition. So the, the advantage of the cubic uh, spinel is the conductivity in the solid state. This is a migration path compared to the cubic and the tetragonal phase. So when inserting the magnesium ion, 
uh, move to the octahedral position. This is a discharge state, uh, I mean the rock salt phase. So after the charging state, uh, during the charging state, uh, there is a, a uh, energy gap between the tetragonal and the cubics, and the reverse uh, charge reaction can easily promote uh, in the cubic phase. So I, uh, we consider the cubic phase should show uh, better performance than the tetra tetragonal spinels. Actually, we uh, performed the uh, electrochemical performance test and showed the cubic is much better than the tetragonal phase. So the next, uh, I'll show the alcohol reduction process uh, to uh, fabricate much more uh, low, uh, small particles. So usually we uh, use the wet process uh, using the uh, divalent or trivalent and, and cations to change potentials or uh, pHs to, to obtain the oxides. Here we focused on the permanganate, 7 plus, to reduce, to obtain the uh, manganese oxide. Because the permanganate ions is very uh, reactive, so the nucleation can proceed very rapidly to obtain the super uh, nano-sized spinels. <coughs> so this is a brief reaction. So by mixing the uh, magnesium ion and permanganate ion with the ethanol condition, uh, the reaction will finish within one hour in the room temperature. So this is a TM images. So we can see the one uh, particle around here. You know, the particle size is around five nanometers. So this uh, x ray pattern show here, uh, you can see the very broad x ray peaks. Uh, we can uh, somehow fit it to the uh, cubic spinel phase, uh, similarly. Uh, however, uh, these very small particles, uh, very uh, unstable uh, when uh, capturing, uh, obtaining the materials, so it largely aggregated to this very big secondary particles. So very large secondary particles cannot apply to the cathode materials, so we have to disperse these materials. So because uh, this process is a wet process, so we can easily add uh, uh, like a graphene materials to suppress the aggregation. Uh, this is a, a typical picture with the TM images. So by just imagining graphene into the solution, uh, homogeneous composite are yeah, very easily obtained. You can see the uh, dots of the spinels and the graphene seeds like this. So by mixing with graphene, so it shows very great uh, electrochemical performance uh, compared to the without graphene materials. So this is a, a discharging procedure from three plus to uh, two plus. So it shows uh, 230 milliampere per grams and uh, reversibly. Uh, recovered. Uh, I have to mention that uh, this uh, battery test is performed in the acid nitrate based condition uh, because of the uh, grime based solution sometimes occurs the uh, decomposition reaction during the charge. So, uh, to monitor the uh, cathode material performance, we uh, conducted using this electrolyte. So, after the charge and discharge, uh, the manganese. Uh, balance state uh, recovered uh, so very clearly. So these materials should uh, be a very uh, great performance as the uh, two-valent and trivalent uh, redox reactions. And uh, <coughs> this procedure uh, is a mixed procedure for the uh, combining the graphene with the spinel materials. So <coughs> this uh, also uh, sh shows a very advantage uh, compared to the just mix, just uh, blending the uh, graphene and the oxide after the obtaining materials. This is a one-pot process. So uh, surprisingly, this uh, process is very similar to the graphene oxide synthesis uh, of the gra graphites. So by adding the permanganate iron, graphene uh, are partially oxidized to become hydrophilic. So this is a, a water absorption and contact angle uh, images. So the composite, uh, I mean the one pot process of the materials, uh, showed uh, the much uh, three times higher than the water absorption <coughs> compared to the physically mixed uh, materials. So uh, very fine uh, com uh, complex should show a much better cathode performance uh, in the uh, materials. 
And also, uh, this threshold material shows a great uh, late performance with uh, uh, high cyclabilities. So, but uh, this uh, uh, procedure requires a large amount of graphene. So, next step, we reduced uh, the graphene. We omitted the graphene to synthesize the uh, very po highly porous materials, uh, MZMN204 materials. So, usually, we obtain just drying uh, these materials. Uh, to obtain uh, like a uh, huge uh, aggregated samples. So this aggregation occurs during the drying process. So we apply the freeze drying process. So after the freeze drying, the specific surface area greatly enhanced uh, from 150 to uh, 500. And also uh, the cathode performance greatly improved uh, from here to here. So by freeze drying, the cathode material uh, becomes uh, ultra porous uh, characteristics and with a highly surface, high uh, specific surface area. So these uh, components are very important to improve the cathode materials in the oxide spinels. However, this value, uh, 170, is not uh, the limit of the discharging capacity. The theoretical capacity of these materials is uh, 270, so this value is much lower than that. Uh, we consider the reason uh, is uh, the surface uh, of the materials. Because there is no heat treatment, uh, only wet process, the surface of the spinel should be uh, hydroxide. So we uh, checked the IR spectra uh, from the this purple curve, so you can see the uh, OH uh, vibration uh, around here and around here. So this uh, hydroxy group should uh, prohibit uh, the magnesium insertion into the spinels. So then we uh, performed the uh, annealing process to the, these materials uh, by changing the heating temperature and uh, perform the uh, cathode performance. So after the heating with 300 or 400 degree, <coughs> degree C, it showed uh, 270 milliampere per gram. Uh, it is a theoretical value of uh, these materials. So by uh, tuning the uh, surface condition and the porosity uh, and uh, diameter size should uh, be important to achieve the uh, high voltage operation with the spinel oxide to the magnesium battery performance. So I again show the particle diameters and the magnesium insertion depths uh, I show in the introduction. So the previous one uh, obtained from the Zolgel process showed uh, a one nanometer insertion depths. However, uh, our pro uh, produced uh, material shows uh, about two nanometer depths uh, magnesium insertion occurred. Uh, because this material is a metastable phase, uh, that is easier to magnesium insertion against the tetragonal spinel. So uh, this uh, downsizing particles should be uh, great to for the uh, magnesium cathode materials. So this is a summary of my talk, and uh, I acknowledge this my uh, research group. So he's a professor Homa in the Tohoku University, Japan, and uh, he, there is a student. So yesterday, uh, my student, Mr. Imura, uh, delivered a talk about the coating materials. So thank you very much for the uh, kind attention and thank you, Shane.